The W3C Web Driver Protocol has at least three advantages. Number one, it provides standards. Number two, it provides stability. And number three, it provides an updated actions API that is supplied with better resources. I will talk about all three and get straight to the point. If you're interested in more videos, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon. You can also follow me on Twitter, connect with me on LinkedIn and Facebook. I will also place the transcript and presentation slides on GitHub. In this session, I am going to speak about selecting for components, advantages, mobile automation, and cloud platforms. Starting with the components, Selenium has moved from three to four because of the W3C web driver protocol. This is an example of Selenium 3, which includes the JSON wire protocol. The objective of JSON wire protocol was to transfer information from the client to the server. That information was processed over HTTP by sending HTTP requests and receiving HTTP responses. With Selenium 4, the JSON wire protocol has been removed from the new architecture. Now, there is direct communication between the browser drivers and Selenium client web driver language bindings. The first component has two parts combined into one. Selenium client is a separate part and web driver language bindings is a different part. Selenium is an API that have commands for automating our browser. Web driver has only one job and that job is to talk to the browser through a driver. Each language have their own bindings. Bindings mean the same commands written for Java is also written for C Sharp, Python, Ruby, and JavaScript. You may have noticed that Selenium added support for W3C protocol starting at version 3.8. According to Simon Stewart in this Selenium 4 webinar with Browser Stack. He mentioned the versions of Selenium since 3.8 have spoken to both JSON wire protocol and W3C protocol. After running your test script, look for info detected dialect W3C to see if your Selenium version is speaking to W3C. Both of these screenshots show W3C for Selenium 3.8 and Selenium 4. If not W3C, then it will show OSS, which means open source software. Back to our diagram. We see the second component is browser drivers, and it have two functions. The first function is to receive a request from Selenium client and web driver language bindings, then pass that request to the browser. A driver is also known as a proxy responsible for controlling the browser. The second function is to return a response from the browser back to the Selenium client and web driver language bindings. All of the drivers use W3C web driver protocol and most of them are created by the browser vendors. When it comes to the third component, web browsers. This is where all of the Selenium commands are performed. The browser receives a request, performs the request, and sends back a response to the driver. Also notice how Opera is not available as a driver or browser. In reality, they are still available, but I did not add them because the web driver implementations are no longer under development, so native support has been removed for Opera and Phantom JS. Remote is another form of communication to the browser. It can happen through the remote web driver or Selenium server. The remote web driver is a class that implements the web driver interface. With Selenium 4, 
Firefox and Safari Driver continue to extend Remote Web Driver. However, Chrome Driver and Edge Driver no longer support, no longer extend Remote Web Driver, but they extend Chromium Driver. In the introduction, I showed how Chromium Driver, Firefox Driver, Internet Explorer Driver, Opera Driver, and Safari Driver all extend Remote Web Driver. We see three of the boxes, Remote Web Driver, Browser Drivers, and Web Browsers are gray because they all run on the same system. The Selenium server is different. It's a way to communicate remotely when talking to the driver, but not on the same system as the driver. That's why Selenium server is a different color. We start the server by using Selenium standalone jar file. After it starts, the server directs our test strips to remote web driver. For W3C web driver protocol, the advantages are standards, stability, and actions. W3C stands for Worldwide Consortium, which is an international group of people that create long-term standards for the web. With that first advantage of standards, our test scripts run consistently on each browser. There were times with Selenium 3 that some commands perform offbeat on different browsers. Since Selenium 4 is compliant with W3C web driver, there is no more required encoding and decoding of the API request. The second advantage is stability. I believe backward compatibility is the main benefit of stability. Per Simon Stewart, they are fully aware that some people will want to use the old JSON wire protocol. So the Java bindings and the Selenium server would provide mechanism for people to use the old JSON wire protocol. They know we have spent time we have spent effort and we have been dedicated to building up our test suite. Therefore, our test suite will remain smooth for Selenium 4. No changes to our test scripts unless an API has been deprecated. Deprecated APIs like the finds by interfaces have been removed from Selenium 4. As a result, the web driver APIs are going to continue working like there was never a change to Selenium. The updated action API is the third advantage. With this API, we can handle the keyboard and the mouse events like double clicking an element. It's an advantage because Selenium 4 offer ways to perform more than one action at the same time like pressing two keys. That's an advantage for UI automation. For mobile automation, Appium is the tool for using mobile applications. We see on Appium our site, the introduction shows native, mobile web, and hybrid applications on iOS mobile, Android mobile, and Windows desktop platforms. The Appium client library have implemented elements of the W3C protocol already. I think since version 1.9. Also, cloud platforms such as Sauce Labs and Browser Stack support W3C web driver. However, the format of their capabilities would have changed. You can go to their site to see what capabilities need to be updated. Here's the page for Browser Stack with the introduction section, talk about why changes are being made, what does it mean to me, updating the Selenium test, and example section that shows how capabilities are passed with the W3C WebDriver protocol. 
Sauce Labs have a page that shows W3C capabilities, support with these sections. What you will know, verifying capabilities, W3C web driver compliant, instantiating web driver, and common test scripts configuration errors to avoid. That's it for W3C web driver protocol. Don't forget to connect and subscribe. And next, I will demo the relative locators, which locate elements based on the relationship to another element. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Books available in paperback, ebook, and PDF. All Part 1 ebooks and PDF documents are free. Programming books for UFT. Programming books for Java. Here's the Selenium Automation Book. And Test NG. Subscribe to get notification of future videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.